Hey, making a wet molded business card snapper. Hey, this is Los here from American Mustache Leatherworks. Let's get started. First, you're gonna wanna cut out a piece of leather, a lot bigger than what you're gonna need. Get it soaked in. I had previously soaked this, but I decided let's record it. So I'm just gonna do a little extra soaking. You could use warm water, cold water, either way you're gonna get it all soaking wet and let it sit for about 10 minutes. Grab yourself a piece of stone or anything that's not gonna soak in that water because you're gonna let this thing sit overnight. So first things first, I had made a template out of leather. I got this from, I got this idea from Weaver, uh, one of their videos on just using scrap leather to make yourself a mold for molding. So once you've got that going, which is a great idea, well, who was it, Jack Dorsey? Not Jack Dorsey, Chuck Dorsey. Uh, either way, what I'm using here is my bone folder, and I want to stretch that leather around that mold that I made out of leather, which is great. I'm also going to be using that throughout the process, so keep your eye out on that. So uh, instead of getting these right angle edges here, I want to make sure that it's sort of round. So I definitely don't want right angles to catch while they get put in or pulled out of your pocket. So make sure you take good care of doing this. This might take, this might be the longest part of this actual build, if you will. Because you want to make sure this is the, this is the main part, the main body. So make sure you do it well and get up in there real good. And check that out. It's starting to take shape already. It doesn't take much. So the next step, you're going to want to clamp it down to your whatever surface that you have going on. I happen to have this little piece of, I think it's granite. Uh, one thing you guys want to do is you're going to want to put down some scrap leather. Because of the nature of the, the clamps there, they have this little design. You don't want that the design to be pressed into that leather. Now, I had previously sewn on, not sewn on, glued on some square patches of leather onto those clamps, but they still leave an impression. So I don't want that impression to show through. So just go ahead and use some scrap leather. Pretty easy to find if you're a leather worker. <laughs> but check it out. You put it in and you can get a really good, really good molding out of this. So once that's done, you put it aside. So I had made this pattern here, which is going to be the other end. This is only a two-piece pattern. And so go ahead and use your, your awl and trace her out. We're going to do some cutting here in a second, so one good thing to do is get yourself a nice, sharp blade. These were pretty cheap. Got a hundred of them for about five bucks. Nice. Careful. All right, get yourself your non-slide ruler there. It's got some cork on the other side. Give it a good cut and... Cool, man. It's been the next day. We're here again. You do your 9 to 5 and you come home and it's your 5 to 10, right? Because you got no life. All right, so check it out. You pull off all those scrap leathers. It might stick a little bit, but it won't take a little course to get off. But there it is. A nice wet molded uh, front bo main body part. So we're going to make a little slot to pull the cards out. I'm using my bar tool. I used to be a bartender, so I've got plenty of those. So I started cutting it out and said, hey, man, I need to use my punch. So I grabbed my punches. These are great. And punch it. So if you see, I'm using that mold because it's going to be very difficult to work around this thing because it's got a hump in it. So this thing is going to be used like crazy in this project. However, it's not good to try to stamp on it. Um, I didn't show the stamping process because I ruined this project a bit. Uh, just by stamping it incorrectly and um, you get the edges of the stamp on there and it looks doesn't look the best. But we're going to mosey on through and get this going. So we're going to cut this top section off, just the edge of it, so that it leaves an opening for our little snap wallet here. Careful. There you go. Sweet. So let's go ahead and start dyeing it. The first prototype I made of this, I had slapped this all together, all natural veg, 
and I decided to dye it after. And one thing I came across was I wanted to get the inside of it painted as well. And when I tried to paint it, I couldn't get my dauber all the way inside. So go ahead and get that thing dyed first. Throw your needs foot oil down first. It'll take the dye a lot better, make it a little bit more richer, I believe. You can also put the needs foot on after. But uh, I seem to like this a lot better beforehand. Get the inside and the outside of it. Get your Phoebings Pro die out, and you can use a dauber if you like. I like to use this little um, lint-free cloth. Makes a makes just works out better for me. I like it. You'll find your way. First, I'm gonna do the inside of that main flap. And I thought maybe okay. Should I do it now? Oh yeah, I'll do it now. Next time, note to self, put a little paper towel down. You learn a lot as you do these kind of things. I haven't been doing this very long, so I find that I'm learning a lot from every single process. As you see, I put down a piece of leather because I didn't want it to get to the other side. So I put two coats of Pro Dye on. And now I'm gonna throw on a little bit of Resoline. This will make it super shiny. Now, my next one I'm going to make for this customer, I'm definitely not going to put the resoline on there. It darkened it up quite a bit, and it's not as soft as you would just put on some saddle soap or minx oil or anything like that. So next one I'm going to do, no resoline, but this still makes a beautiful shine, uh, and it really looks still professional this way, so it's really a, your preference. Next thing. Go ahead and cut it out. Now I left a little extra space, bigger than the uh, back flap, because we want to cut that out. And we don't want it to be too small. We, we're just trying to save ourselves from any anger later. So cut out enough. Now we're going to want to put our rivets in first, our snap rivets. So I had got previously marked where it's going to go. And I use my cheap revolving punch there. I had to put an extra piece of leather under there because it helps make that hole even and perfect in one shot. And you use your little anvil to set it, and biggity bam, it's on there. How about it? Mark where these are going to meet so you don't put too much glue. And apply your glue. Now I'm using barge here. Put it in a squeeze bottle. I can't tell you how great this has been. Not only that, get yourself one of these guys. Uh, these, I forget what they're called, but uh, I like to call it a glue, a glue spreader. It's got silicone on one side and it's plastic on the other. The silicone side is great. It'll just roll right off it once it dries. Uh, this is pretty easy to remove off of that tip as well. So once you've applied glue on both sides, carefully slap them together. Of course, because you cut one one part bigger than the other, you're going to have to remove the excess. And so, there you go. We're going to cut. It doesn't sit flat, so I use some extra pieces of leather there. Grab your compass, your stitch groover, whatever you want. I'm not a big fan of stitch groover too much, so I'm just going to use my compass to scratch out a line. Next step, I'm going to go get my chisels. There they are. These are cheap. I think they're $20 chisels on Amazon. I can't tell you. These are these have been great chisels. I, uh, you know, you think they'd be bad because they're 20 bucks. I gave them a shot. They had bad reviews, but they're great. And look, if they stick, get your bone folder. Boom. It sucks. It gets pulled right out. I, I gave these a five star because they were good. But I've only had them maybe a month, so we'll see if uh, they last the test of time. They definitely made it through this project. All right, here we go, the tedious step of saddle, uh, saddle stitching. Now, I'm not showing too much of this process. This is the, sort of the in-the-hands version without the, the pony. I've seen lots of YouTubers use this process. It's great. It's not uh, the best-looking stitch, in my opinion, but it is a nice, easy stitch that you can do in the hands. It gets done, rather, you can do a lot of stitches in a, just a minute with that. So. Fast forward to the end of it, the ending of this uh, stitch where we're going to pull it out and we're going to melt the ends. 
Boom. All right, get some sandpaper, and we're going to make those edges nice and flat. And we're going to round off that little part right there. So it's easy just to kind of cut it at a diagonal and then run it through some sandpaper. Grab your edger from Tandy. There it is. That's a number two, if I'm not mistaken. It's not the keen edge, though. The keen edge will be used. Uh, I don't think I showed it, though, but it is used for the inside of that slot, which is perfect. This is my burnishing gum, Tacanol, I believe it's called, uh, pronounced. Little dab will do you on this stuff. Trust me. Now, if I didn't put that resiline on there and you got a little too much on this on the leather, it might soak into that leather. So be careful. Uh, in this case, I wasn't too concerned because resiline was on there and it was sort of a protective coating. I think in the next clip, you'll see that I put a little on the stitches there and I wasn't concerned one bit. As you can see, here's a close up. Grab a little, dab it. Dab, 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 dab. And then rub it in. You see, I get a little on the leather there, but I'm not concerned because it's got the resiline on there, which I can easily wipe that off later. If I did get that on there and there was no resiline, I would immediately get my cloth to wipe it off because I don't want that to stain. So here's my wood slicker. Now, you notice I use that top part, the flatter or the nice longer edge. Uh, excuse me, the, the uh, whatever the groove is. But I want to use each of the grooves in the wood slicker uh, so that I get a nice edge a nice round edge. One side's going to do the top of it, the other one's going to do the sides, and then it's just going to do it all together. So before we uh, finish up and get some edge coat, we got to set that last little rivet. I live upstairs in an apartment, and so I have to come up with some creative ways to not make too much noise. So I have this big old pad, and I have to kind of hit a little bit harder and a little longer just to make sure I get a good set. Don't judge me. All right. I want to get the inside edge of this slot. And I found it a good idea to leave the template in there because I don't want a round edge in this slot. I want more of a, a 45 degree angle for this burnish. So I'm going to apply my tacanol there. I hope I'm saying that right. Get your wood slicker and, and at an angle, about 45 degree angle, just burnish it back and forth. You can push up against your leather template you have inside, which you can easily pull out if you need to. And then we're going to do three of these processes. We're going to do three edge coats. We're going to make sure we get our beautiful black edge coating in. Here's a close up of it. Now you don't have to put thick layers on there because you're going to do this three times. But you put one nice layer, make sure you cover up, make sure there's no extra bare leather, naked leather hanging out. And then once it's dry, you give it a little sanding, but here's the most part, get your soldering iron or some, some sort of hot thing. And this will make it super smooth, super beautiful, glassy looking. And it sort of will make those edges, if there's any sort of crease in it, because edge coat will sit right in those edges and you'll see every little imperfection. This will sort of spread it out and make it an even edge. So this is the third coat of edge coat. And this one you can just leave alone because it's going to be nice and glassy. It's going to look beautiful. And it's going to look like one solid piece of leather, which is what we're going for. Now, I don't know what I was thinking, but don't put uh, saddle soap on top of resiline because it doesn't work. But if you didn't put resiline on there, you would want to finish it with the saddle soap and it's beautiful. And it's about 20 ounces of leather, so I don't know how much cards that equals to, maybe 10, 15, but they fit easily in there. Closes up, and there you have it. There's the business card snap wallet by American Mustache Leatherworks. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. You don't have to do it in any of those orders. You can find it any order you like there, really. But we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.